This device is known as a ripple tank. We can show it to show a wide variety of wave phenomena, but the particular one I want to show here is interference between two sources. The ripple tank consists of a tank, shallow tank of water, a light here which projects through the water, and so you can actually see the ripples on the surface below. And here we have a vibrator with two arms. At the moment, I've got one of them out of the water. When I turn this on, you'll see it produces circular waves. They simply spread out from that point there, at more or less constant speed. There's a little bit of dispersion, but very little. And so you see the waves spread out in a circular fashion. That's not particularly interesting. It gets more interesting when we put the second source in. And now we have the two sources in phase producing ripples, one there and one there. And you can see fairly clearly what happens in this case. There are places where the waves add up, i.e. you get constructive interference, for example, along the line perpendicular to the line joining the two, you'll get constructive interference and you'll always get a maximum. A little off to one side, you'll see that you get destructive interference. The waves are out of phase there, they cancel out. And similarly over here, they cancel out. So there is destructive interference, there is destructive interference, there is destructive interference, there is destructive interference. In between, you have a maximum of constructive interference. This is a fundamental principle of the young slits experiment that we do with light. However, there's an extra twist when you're doing the experiment with light that doesn't arise when you're doing it with water waves. We can change the frequency, which in turn means changing the wavelength. And you see the pattern doesn't qualitatively doesn't change, but as we increase the frequency, the interference lines get closer together. We can't go too high because we burn the motor out. <laughs>